A word of warning. This is not professionally edited or scripted or anything. I'm just going with it. So if something doesn't sound professional, fucking cry about it. Nobody pays me for these anyway. So, we're converting a plantigrade humanoid model into something that can take advantage of this new digitigrade setup. For this to actually be doable, you must know your way around things like Maya, Max, or Blender, and Unity. Specifically in Unity, that's also going to be constraints. Even though you're clicking a bunch of buttons, I'm not going to treat this as a beginner's tutorial, so if you know nothing about Blender and or Unity, go figure that out and then come back. But before we even do anything, before we commit to editing, let's actually see what the final result will be like. Here in the bottom window, you can see two models. The one on the left is the old Digitigrade system, um, the one with the long hip and the one that doesn't bend that well. That's the system we came up with some two, three years ago, I don't know, a while ago. And the one on the right is the one that you, the, you can follow along with this tutorial. Now, the two green balls at the feet are called IK Golds, and for all intents and purposes, you can actually think of them as of uh, full-body food trackers. They're not quite the same, but eh, it's good enough. This is also done in Unity, not in VRChat right now. Um, it's using the thing called Final IK uh, Full Body Biped IK. It's a component that VRChat uses themselves. So, again, for all intents and purposes, this is about as close to the real deal as you get without having to put on the full set of trackers. So first of all, open Blender, pop the model in, set it up so you're comfortable working with it. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the X symmetry so I don't have to do this same stuff on the other leg. Click one of the hip bone tails and then extrude a new bone that terminates somewhere around the digitigrade ankle. Now extrude another bone out of that new bone and terminate it somewhere within the vicinity of an existing foot bone. It doesn't have to be precise, but the more accurate you are, the better the result will be during the skinning. Before I continue, I'm going to assign a separate group to these newly created bones, so they inherit the new group and therefore I can easily switch between layers without having to juggle bones around or hide anything. Now I'm going to extrude two more bones. One for the foot, that's going to copy your foot's rotation, and then I'm also going to extrude a toe parent bone. Later down the line I'm actually going to reparent all the toe bones to that new parent. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and rename these bones. I'm going to use a naming convention for all the deforming bones and call them S underscore whatever the fuck else. Uh, I'm not going to rename old bones that are now becoming controllers. They are not going to skin the mesh in contrast to these new bones. I'm switching into the weight painting mode and looking for the groups that are associated with our plantigrade legs as they were. I found the correct vertex group that corresponds to the plantigrade knee bone, and I want to reassociate it to the newly extracted knee bone. All I need to do for that is just double click the bone entry and change its name to the name of the bone desired. So in my case, that's going to be s underscore knee dot l. To save myself some time and effort, I'm just going to duplicate the existing uh, plantigrade leg skinning group, and then I'm going to edit it down so it only affects the area below the ankle, the digitigrade ankle. 
so metacarpals. And since this area is entirely similar to the previous group, we can just subtract this newly copied and edited group from the original plantigrade group. And since our plantigrade group is already associated with our newly created bone, we're all falling in line just fine. I'm adding the modifier that allows me to subtract one skinning group from another, Now I'm previewing the S underscore need or L group and I can see that there's no skinning assigned to it. That's actually correct because our metacarpal is a total copy of the knee so subtracting one from one is zero and we can't go into negative skinning. So all I need to do now is just edit it down on the metacarpal and apply the modifier. In the post space, I'm previewing the skinning and also previewing the modifier work. I've uh, cut down some chunk of the leg and I can see that that skinning goes back to the correct S underscore need or L. So I go back to the rest pose, control Z multiple times, and then just manually subtract that weight where it doesn't need to be and get a best result out of it. Here I remember that Blender actually has the mirroring functionality for vertex groups, so I don't have to edit the other leg myself. And instead I can just tell Blender to apply the modifier, then remove the right leg groups, then copy the left leg groups, and then mirror them. Then I just need to rename these copies to correspond with the leg bones that I want them to deform with. So in that case, it will be s underscore foot dot l dot o one is going to turn into s underscore foot dot r or s underscore foot dot l underscore copy into s underscore foot dot r. Now let's rename the group that's associated with a plantigrade uh, chain so it's all associated with the uh, digitigrade chain because we have the foot bone and the toe parent bone in the plantigrade chain and we would like them to deform with our, our digitigrade chain. One last thing to do now is to parent all the toes to the digitigrade toe parent bone. And we're basically done. Now just uh, test your model, deform it a little bit, 
And if everything is good, just export it out and import in Unity. Now, I forgot to edit the toe and foot pads on the bottom of the leg. I entirely forgot that they were even there, but that's okay. It, they just will fly off, and you'll see them detach from the main mesh. That's fine. Just edit the model thoroughly yourself. I'm going to drag and drop the FBX of exported out of Blender into Unity, switch the rig type to Humanoid, and then apply a dummy material to all the material slots because, well, the look of this model isn't important for this case. So now that the model is set up, let's untick the Strip Bones option and then enter the Humanoid Retargeting System Configuration panel. I'm greeted with an error in the spine. That is irrelevant for this tutorial, so ignore it. I will fix it slightly later in the footage. Now, what we need to do here is we need to reassign the leg bones. We have two sets of leg bones. One set is the deforming set with the S underscore, and that's what's going to be driven by the rotation constraints. And then we have our controller bones that are just our regular old plantar grade bones that we haven't renamed. So what we need to do is we need to find the left knee, left ankle, and left toe, and right uh, counterparts, and then just slot them into the uh, humanoid retargeting system slots on the corresponding side, left and right. Then just reset and reapply the T-pose and check in the muscle and settings if your legs no longer bend and uh, extend as you open and close or twist the body. Apply those settings and then in your hierarchy, navigate to your hip bones for the left and the right legs, collapsing everything that you don't need to. You can expand multiple nodes by alt-clicking the arrows in the inspector. Now select all four of those deforming bones and add a rotation constraint to all of them. Without clicking off of those bones, also add at least one slot to all of them because you're going to need that. For the metacarpal bones rotation constraint, we want to tweak it a little bit. So first of all, set its weight to be somewhere within 0.6. That's a good starting point. You can adjust it later. And then add another slot to the sources. Now go ahead and assign the plantigrade to digitigrade constraint sources, but ignore the metacarpal for now. For the metacarpal bone, you want to copy the rotations off of the foot and the hip bone. And you also want to keep the weights associated to those sources equal to one another and always above 0.5, or at least at 0.5. Your left leg is done, so you can just go ahead and repeat the same process on your right leg. 
just keeping in mind that the sources will be copied from the right leg now. And here's the jump cut I promised. Uh, so I fixed the torso. And uh, now we're just going to add the full body biped IK, which will automatically pick up the bone bindings from the humanoid retargeting system. And so we will be able to preview the actual IK in action in here. Uh, I've also added the green IK goal for the left leg, and I'm going to reference it in the uh, FB BIK. Yeah, I'm dragging the green ball around in the play mode, and you can preview the changes that the IK system does to the IK chain. So, as the leg collapses, the metacarpal uh, collapses itself as well, following the hip. And then if we try to stand on the toes, rotating our foot down, you can see that the metacarpal expands backwards, and it, it, it just works fine. Now... The important part here is that with this system, we're sacrificing a little bit of precision in the toes for a lot more precision in the hips. But if you value precision in the toes rather than the hips, you should probably stick with the Aldry system. Now, all you need to do at this point is, if you've added this component for some reason, uh, you need to remove it, exit the play mode and remove it, and uh, add your avatar descriptor, add your parts to the avatar, and you're done. You're ready for upload. That was it.